Cascade Hoops Talk. Join us on Twitter, Cascade Hoop Talk, Facebook, Cascade Hoops Talk, and also on YouTube. Hey, this is Billy D. Today is Sunday, November 15th, 2020, the year we all want to flush down the toilet. Hey, let's go through the top 25 for the week, talk about what's going on in NAI basketball. Let's start with number 25, Antelope Valley. They play in the Cal Pack. They've not played yet this season. They're scheduling, scheduled to hopefully begin their season after the first of the year. Number 24, Union. They are 1-2. and two. After splitting at the Lou Cunningham Classic last week, Union lost their conference opener to Columbia International University Tuesday on the road, a score of 97-80. to 80. Markel Turner, he played well for Union in the loss. He played 32 minutes, scoring 21 points. Also, Blake Irvin came off the bench, played 20 minutes, scored 17. Union played Columbia International pretty even. In fact, they they out-rebounded the Rams. But Union had 22 turnovers and only 9 assists. Uh, By contrast, Columbia International had 6 scoring in double digits. They had 22 assists and only 13 turnovers. Uh, Union needs, they need need more offensive output from more players uh, for them to begin winning. Next up for Union, they travel to Kingsport, Tennessee on November 28th and 29th. Two big tests there. They face West Virginia Tech and IU Kokomo. Number 23, Oregon Tech. Uh, They still can't play or practice due to state restrictions. No timeline on return to action. Number 22, SAGU, that's the Southwestern Assemblies of God. They have yet to play. They show a game with Dallas Christian scheduled for November 17th in Waxanatchee. Uh, hopefully that's not canceled. We'll get to see them play and, and open up their action. Number 21, Carroll College. Uh, they're in Montana out of the frontier. They are 1-1 one one now. On Friday in Aberdeen, South Dakota, uh, the Saints beat Presentation handily, 80-41. to Yovan uh, Shivan Shunning, he led Carroll with 25 points, 9 rebounds in the win. Dennis Flowers the third, he chipped in 25, I'm sorry, he chipped in 15. Carroll racked up a huge first half lead against Presentation. Cruised to the win, holding Presentation to 32% shooting. They caused 28 turnovers. However, Carroll struggled mightily from the line, going 14 for 24. Isaac Essien, Ellis Evans, they both scored 11 for presentation. And then on Saturday, Carroll took on number seven, Morningside. Morningside, they took an early first half lead and they controlled Carroll throughout the game. Final in this one, 81 to 59. Morningside's Zach Immig with a double double, 10 points. 11 rebounds. Will Potterbaum, he scored 20. Trey Powers, 15. Trey Brown with 14. Carroll was simply out defended in this game. Morning shot, Morningside shot 56%, while Carroll was held to 36% shooting. Carroll did not defend the three well, with Morningside shooting over 47% from the arc. Carroll Shamrock Campbell. He scored 23. Next up for Carroll, they host Dickinson State on November 20th at home in Helena. Number 20, Xavier, Louisiana. They're 2-1 and one now. They haven't played since their loss to number 16, Loyola. Xavier's next action is hosting William Carey on Wednesday, November 18th. Number 19, the Masters. They are 1-0. They defeated West Coast Baptist on Tuesday, 108-72. The Masters' Gavin Lloyd, a double-double, 21 points, 13 rebounds. And Gavin DeJong, along with the double-double, 11 points, 14 rebounds. Jordan Starr also had 11 assists in the win. It was an amazing defensive effort by the Masters. They forced an astounding 48 misses by West Coast, 30 of those in the second half. And the Masters, they got those misses and turned them into points. They pulled down 56 rebounds and shot 55%, including 50% from the three. 
Jacob Manis scored 28 for West Coast Baptist. Next up for the Masters, they're scheduled to play the same West Coast Baptist team on Tuesday and Antelope Valley on Saturday. I hope they can play that Antelope Valley game. That's always a war. It's never a friendly account. Uh, Dalton State, number 18, Dalton State. It's They've yet to play. They're scheduled to play Lindsey Wilson on November 27th. Number 17, Olivet Nazarene. They're still 0-1. They're scheduled to play at the end of November, traveling to Taylor of the Crossroads. Number 16, Loyola, Louisiana. They're still 1-0. and uh, They're scheduled to play LSU Alexandria on Monday. And then Dillard on the 19th and Southeastern Baptist on the 21st. Hopefully they can get all those games in, be busy week for Loyola. Number 15, Cumberlands. They're still 5-0 and after their win at Simmons last week. Uh, they're not scheduled to play again until December 3rd against Life. And Life is undefeated. Uh, number 14, Ottawa of Kansas. Uh, they are still 2-0, and but they are scheduled to travel to Southwestern on the 17th and host Tabor on November 20th. Those are both good teams. Those are both uh, KCAC conference games. Number 13, LSU Alexandria. They're still one and one. They're scheduled to host number 16, Loyola. And that'll be a rematch of an earlier loss. And on the 16th, they play Loyola on the 16th. And on the 22nd, they're scheduled to play Southeastern Baptist. So LSU Alexandria has a couple games coming up. Uh, this week number 12 marion uh, out of the crossroads conference they're two and oh marion they just they put a big hurt on east west university on friday 100 to 51 marion just wouldn't let east west get anything going they forced 19 turnovers they held east west to 36 percent shooting and they held them to three from three for 13 from three land cameron walter always tough he led marion 24 points, 6 rebounds. He played 26 minutes. Hayden Lacabelle, he scored 20. And Christian Harvey, 15. Marion, very unselfish. 24 24 assists in the game for Marion. They shot 60% from the floor. 12 for 27 from 3. Clue Idika and Patrick Grabowski each had 11 for East-West. So Marion... They are 2 and 0 now and they go to they host Rio Grande on Tuesday and mark this one they host Indiana Wesleyan on Saturday. That'll be good. I hope they can play that game. Number 11 Providence, they've yet to play. They don't have anything on their schedule until after the first of the year. Number 10 John Brown, same thing, they haven't played. Don't have anything on their schedule until after the first of the year. Number nine, Arizona Christian. They're still 3-0. and They have no game scheduled until December 8th, and they'll play Park University Gilbert again. I don't know, the way things are going, Arizona Christian will play, probably play Park University Gilbert 15 times. College of Idaho out of the Cascade Conference, they've yet to play. They're not scheduled until to start until after the first of the year. Um, yeah, hopefully they can play. I don't, I, you know, a lot of their games are with Oregon teams. Highly, at this point, it's highly doubtful the Oregon teams will play any games this year. Uh, number seven, Morningside. They're four and one. On Wednesday, they traveled to Jamestown. They fell 85 73. In that Jamestown game, Morningside, they shot uncharacter, uncharacteristically poorly from three. They went five for 17. Zach Amig, he went two for 10 from the field. Only six points. Jamestown also out rebounded the Mustangs, thirty-six for t- to twenty-four. That's unusual. Morningside, that's usually a key strength. They're a very strong team. Uh, Jamestown played very well. They were led by sophomore Mason Walters. He had twenty-two points, seventeen rebounds. Will Cordes for Jamestown. He added sixteen off the bench. Morningside was led in this game by Trey Brown. He did everything he could. He played great game. He scored 29 points. Morningside, they played a couple of games over the weekend in Aberdeen. They took on 
Yellowstone Christian winning that game 88 to 67. Uh, they really won. Morningside won this game on the boards. They out rebounded Yellowstone Christian 52 to 25. Zach Immig 16 points, 10 rebounds for a double double. Trey Brown 12 points, 13 rebounds for another double double. Devin Jones, he scored 25 for Yellowstone Christian in the loss. Morningside beat number 21 Carroll on Saturday, 81-59, as we detailed earlier. So Morningside now is 4-1, and one, and Morningside is scheduled to take on Mount Marty on the 21st. Number 6, LSU Shreveport. They now are 6-0. and oh. On Tuesday, LSU Shreveport defeated champion Christian 112-62. Uh, LSUS, they forced 26 turnovers. They held champion to 36% shooting. Uh, the pilots of LSUS, they were led by Cadavian Evans, a double-double, 32 points, 11 rebounds. Leandre Washington, he had 26. That's, that's a heck of a pair right there. Uh, Coach Blakenship, you won't be happy, 50% from the line in this one. And then on Thursday, uh, at LSU Shreveport, they pummeled Arlington Baptist 136 to 85. Uh, the pilots, Leandre Washington, 40 in this one. Brennan Maddox, he adds a double double with 15 points, 11 rebounds. The pilots, they forced 27 turnovers. And for Arlington Baptist, Tra Mallard, he scored 32. So next up for LSU Shreveport, uh, Monday they're scheduled to travel to University of North Texas at Dallas. And on Thursday they travel to Philander Smith College. Number five, Lewis Clark State have yet to play. And it looks like they may start action after the first of the year as well. Number four, William Penn, they're 3-0. and Last Sunday, they defeated Harris Stowe, 114-92. Brandon Faison, he, he led six players in double digits for William Penn. He had 27. Uh, rebounding decided this game. William Penn with decisive 60-42 to rebounding advantage. Harris Stowe's Deshaun Munson, he flat lit it up. 51 points, 13 rebounds in the loss on Saturday. Uh, William Penn, they needed a bucket by KV on Blaylock with uh, four seconds to go through in a free throw for good measure. They stayed undefeated, 83-81. Blaylock, he finished with 26 points, 14 rebounds in the victory. William Penn, they won this game on the boards, 49-30. to Chris Jackson, he led Benedictine with 19. So William Penn, they are... Uh, 3-0 and now, uh, tough game against uh, Benedictine, but now they play Wednesday. They travel to Grandview, and on Saturday they go to Culver Stockton. Number three, Indiana Wesleyan, they're 7-0. and On Friday they traveled to Oakland City and beat Oakland City University 114-70. Kyle Mangus, he set a... Uh, Indiana Wesleyan score single game scoring record with 51 in this game. Hits what he needs one more record, right? Michael Thompson the third. He had a double double, 17 points, 10 rebounds. Surprisingly, Oklahoma City University they out rebounded Indiana Wesleyan 49 to 46, and they had 25 offensive boards. Uh, Oakland City did. But they had a ton of misses to rebound. Indiana Wesleyan held them to 32% shooting. Uh, next up for Indiana Wesleyan is that game we talked again about against uh, number 12 Marion. That'll be a league game uh, against number 12 Marion. Number two, Mid-America Christian. They're 3-0. and On Tuesday, they defeated Randall 94-83. Mid-America, they out-rebounded Randall 44-31. to And they needed every one of those rebounds. Randall played them tough. They kept the lead to single digits uh, most of the game. Uh, Mid-America did break out a bit in the second half, uh, but Randall was able to pull it back. Omar Boone, he went for 22, and he led five players in double digits for Mid-America. But Mid-America, they left too many points on the free throw line. They went 21 for 35. 
Randall, they had a balanced attack led by Boog Lewis. He had 15. Thursday, Mid-America Christian, they hosted Ecclesia. It wasn't pretty. Mid-America pounded them. 103 to 45, Omar Boone, 27 points. Terrence Jones, a double-double, 13 and 11. And Zachary McGee, he led Ecclesia with 14. Next up for Mid-America Christian, they travel to Randall again on Monday. Well, the, the game against the game against Randall this week was at Mid America. Now on Monday they travel to Randall, and then they travel to Central Christian on Thursday. Then back home to host Science and Arts on Saturday. Number one, Georgetown. They're two and zero. Oh. They are scheduled to resume action December third against Freed Hardman at home. Okay, so here's some teams to watch. And I'll probably leave your team off, and I'm sorry. Uh, Huntington, they're led by first-year head coach Corey Alford. They're 5-0. and uh, Next up, November 21st, Crossroad Actions, Crossroads Action against Taylor. Talladega, they beat Mobile, Alabama on Saturday. They're 6-1. and one. Keep an eye on them. Dort, out of the G-Pack, they're 5-0, and, oh, and they look good. Jamestown, they beat number seven Morningside, but they lost to Valley City. They're four and one, but they look good. They they're pretty good this year. Life is five and zero. Oh. That's a proud historic program. Uh, they've been playing good basketball in the Sun Conference. Southeastern now is four and zero. Oh. Uh, Point out of Georgia, they're six and one. Uh, another G Pack school, Concordia. They've won five straight after dropping their opener. So that's a a few teams to watch. Scoring after seven games, Indiana Wesleyan's Kyle Mangus, he's averaging 33 points a game. Mason Walters out of Jamestown averaging 27 after after five games. Kyle Mangus, 33 after seven games. There are a lot of others that, that have higher averages, but mostly, you know, one or two games. Taking a look at rebounding, Grant Olson out of Sterling after four games. He's just over 14 per game. And Jamestown Jimmy Mason Walters is at 13 and a half rebound average after five games. And also notable Trey Brown at Mid-American Nazarene. He has 30 assists after three games. It's November 15th, 2020, Sunday, and that's your top 25 NAI roundup. Uh, I know it's frustrating all the teams that aren't playing and, you know, they'll play some weeks and don't play other weeks. Uh, It's extremely difficult year and we all just need to hang in there and, you know, focus on the things that are important and be nice to each other. This is Billy D Cascade Hoops Talk. Thank you so much for listening.